Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It's April 19th, 2018, and uh, we're going to break down some chemtrail surprising news for you guys. Um, have you ever heard about biofuels and contrail control? Now, many of you probably already heard about the chemtrail conspiracy. And this conspiracy has many different uh, calamities associated with it. But I try to keep it real, and I think I keep it realer than most. So, had some pretty epic news today. Um, had some validation of some of the research I've been doing, and I'd really like to share that with you. Um, along with, uh, some hate from the, uh, scientific community on this sort of thing, where apparently even the non-governmental organizations are slamming the UN for this biofuel plan now. So let's take a step back and, uh, let's look at all the facts and I want to break down some truth about planes making clouds using metal Ooh! so let's get right into it um if you guys will hop over to climateviewer.com slash geoengineering and you can do that simply by clicking on geoengineering here at the top of the page and you're going to go to my page geoengineering and weather modification exposed scroll down a little bit we're going to come back to this stuff in a minute but in the geoengineering subsections you have harp and contrail induced cirrus if you will click on that it will bring you to my page, Cirrus Clouds Matter, The Shady Truth About Contrails. Now, in this uh, paper, I've got a pretty good fact here. Um, and we're going to go through some of this stuff, but I want to start right here. So, back in 2015, I um, the, the EPA basically asked, Do you think aircraft emissions are a threat to human health under the Clean Air Act? And... Friends of the Earth, Sierra Group, and all these guys had sued to basically get the EPA to regulate the airline industry. And I, you know, put in my submission, um, and I said, you know, I think that clouds are more important than greenhouse gases, and here's why. So, basically, Lucy Audet from the Senior Policy Advisor at the U.S. EPA, tried to talk me out of coming to Washington, D.C. Of course, I declined. I said I'd really like to have a hearing, and we had one, and uh, you can see that right here. Dangerous um, chemicals and then dumping them in water is somehow safe. Finally, despite great efforts to find bioaccumulation or biomagnification studies on precipitated aviation pollutants, none seem to exist. Ooh, so basically what I was giving them a hard time about was, look, we really don't know what's coming out of these planes. Um, there really hasn't been any testing. And generally speaking, the people online are pretty upset about cloud creation. We really don't concern ourselves too much with the CO2. And I understand that there's a lot of people very concerned about greenhouse gases, but in the grand scheme of things, it seems to be that solar minimums and maximums galactic cosmic rays, then clouds, then water vapor, and finally greenhouse gases. That's what's affecting our climate. So if clouds greater than greenhouse gases, in my personal opinion, and not just my opinion, then what's all the hubbub, bub? So we get into it, and basically the EPA, you know, they, they we had the hearing, we made our points, and very quickly during the Trump um, Hillary election, July 25th, 2016, breaking EPA to limit greenhouse gases coming from airplanes. So they had decided they were going to write regulations, but wait a minute. Not even a week later, Obama and company, White House releases Federal, ABA, Federal Alternative Jet Fuel Research and Development Strategy. Alternative Jet Fuel. Mmm, that sounds interesting. September 3rd, 2016, China, U.S., and Europe pledge, to support, pledge support for Global Aviation Emissions Pact. And finally, in September 12th, about a week later, Greens moved to dismiss EPA lawsuit over airplane emissions. So what happened? 
History repeated itself. Back in 1972, the airline industry was sued over its emissions, and they skirted the law then. This is the second time in history that they were sued over their emissions, and once again, they got their little United Nations agency, the ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, to get together with all the powers that be in the globalists that fly these planes to say, hey, wait a minute, please don't regulate us. We will fix our carbon emission problem by creating clouds that cool the planet, and that will give us carbon offsets. So that's the big plan. Hey, let's stop. Uh, let's stop making clouds that trap heat and melt the poles, and use jet biofuels for contrail control. Contrails might be a punchline in culture these days, thanks to the imaginative folks who have rechristened them chemtrails and embroidered them with elaborate theories involving government and corporate misdeed, but contrails are pretty serious business for a less conspiratorial reason. Scientists believe these ice clouds generated by water exhaust gases water exhaust gases, from aircraft emissions could have a real impact on the climate, perhaps cooling temperatures during the day and warming them at night. Well, that would be all good and everything, but that's exactly the plan. While everybody is mocked for being a tinfoil hatter, for being concerned about seeing their blue sky turn gray on a daily basis, um, the powers that be intend on using alternative jet aviation fuel or jet biofuel to greenwash their way out of this problem. And then I got this. NGOs slam UN Aviation Agency plan for biofuels. This is dated October 10th, 2017. Relatively new. Um, nearly 100 environmental and poverty fighting groups jointly released a letter Tuesday slamming a UN proposal that backs large-scale use of biofuels in commercial planes. Extensive burning of biofuels would vastly expand the production of palm oil, which critics says drives deforestation, higher CO2 emissions, and conflicts with indigenous peoples displaced from their lands. The United Nations International Civil Aviation Organization's vision plan calls for 128 million tons of biofuels to be used in, ev in jet engines every year by 2040, but 2040, going up to 285 million tons, half of the aviation fuel by 2050. Um, the problem with that, they are literally running farmers off their land, buying up land all over the world to grow gasoline so that they can biofuel their way out of their CO2 problem. Um, you know, they said if... if um, if the sector, meaning the aviation industry, were a country, its CO2 output would be on par with Germany or Indonesia and place it among the top 15 carbon polluters worldwide. Um, but the biofuels hype should not be used as another greenwashing measure, says Carlos Calvo Ambell, a climate analyst and industry watchdog, transport and environment based in Brussels. Instead, the ICAO should make aviation pay its fair share of taxes and promote measures that do not that re do reduce aviation emissions. Um, but of course, we know that's not going to happen because at the end of the day, the oil industry is going to own the biofuel industry and the fossil fuel guys who supply the jet fuel who make the clouds will continue doing exactly what they're doing despite their claims for jet biofuel contrail control. So this has a long history to it, but we just I just got a scientific paper that really helps explain this in detail, and I'd like to go through that briefly. So what we have over here, we're going to do a little bit of history first. We're going to go to weathermodificationhistory.com, and I want you guys to see something pretty interesting. If you come over here and you click on newspapers, you're going to go to the newspaper section. And what we have is a whole list of newspapers from 1800 to present. And you see things like this. Navy, so this is 1958. Navy scientist creates clouds, breaks them up. 
And in it, it says, we dropped carbon black suspended in liquid over a track over a track a mile long and produced a solid line of clouds one mile long, Dr. Van Stratton told a reporter. When we dropped one and a half pound dry packages of carbon black, we produced single clouds with each drop. Puff, puff, puff. The Navy team seeded seven clouds with carbon and dissipated each of them in two and a half to 20 minutes. Each cloud turned gray and then rapidly disappeared. Aside from the cost of the airplanes, we spent less than $5 on the experiments in Georgia. Carbon black is commonly used in printers and automobile tires and is nothing more than soot. It is available cheaply is commercial in commercial quantities as a byproduct of the burning of natural gas. Um, so carbon black soot, they're very similar. There are differences, but we're going to just refer to soot for the remainder of this video. Why does this matter? Super planes exhaust particles may cause melting of polar ice 1968. So they've known this for a long time, long, long time. We're going to close those out. Um, so that's what I said when I went to the EPA, you know, in my EPA speech, um, I, I, you know, I really wanted to break down that fact alone that, you know, basically metal particles are the problem. It would seem that you'd have to change all of the aerosols in the background, aerosol in the atmosphere very radically to get a big effect on the clouds, but because mineral dust and metallic particles are such a small amount of particulate matter, just a percent or two, it means that you only have to change about a percent or two of the particles to get a big effect on clouds. Two references on that there. So basically what we're talking about here is planes are making clouds, and the cirrus clouds they're making are filled with metals. So where's the link? I mean, where is this coming from? Now, a lot of people in the chemtrail community, they postulate that it's added to the jet fuel. It is sprayed directly in through the, um, into the high bypass region, or it's dropped in at the rear of the exhaust uh, manifold. But regardless, the general consensus now, um, is that it is related to jet fuel. Now, I've been saying it's been related to jet fuel since 2013. I've been hated very much for that for the last five, six years. And finally, people are starting to pull their head from their anus and realize that I was right. The beauty of this is I just got a scientific paper pretty much confirming all of that. So this is a chemical characterization of freshly emitted particulate matter from an aircraft exhaust using single particle mass spectrometry. Now, this paper, um, which says received December uh, 2015, which is just a couple months after I had spoke at the EPA, um, really goes through that. And there was even a film done about it called Overcast by Matthias Hunk. Um, Matthias actually personally thanked me um, for my research. Um, when doing this movie, he focused on just that, what's coming out of the back of planes. And if you have not seen Overcast, please check it out. It's a great film. Um, they really try to show all the different sides of the angle. Regardless, he got hate for that. But in this paper, um, you know, and, and Lohman was one of the people that he spoke to in that movie. So in that paper, they really break down some interesting points that I want to make immediately. And I've got them highlighted right here. The detected metallic particles were internally mixed with soot particles. So what does that mean? I'm going to come back over here to my Cirrus Clouds Matter page right here. And I'm going to scroll down to R clouds filled with metals and what you're going to see is yes they are filled with metals this is an, a sample of jet a jp5 and jp8 jet a is what's fl flown in commercial aviation jp5 is an older jet fuel based on gasoline and jp8 is a diesel fuel that is used by all of nato so 20 something countries all over the world and what you see is they are very high in aluminum calcium um, things like that 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this paper real quick and just look at what metals were found. And it's pretty darn interesting because this pretty much confirms a lot of what we were talking about. The thing is, there's this little picture right here. And the article was called Lead Lined Clouds. And of course, this article has been deleted from the internet. Oh, no. Is it back up? Yes, it is. Good. And you can see right here that PB is lead. And you can see these are lead inside of soot. And that is a very small particle. These particles are cloud seeds. So if there are metals inside the soot, how do we get the metals in the clouds and where does the soot go? This is a great question. So I was looking at the paper and I summarized it here. And I want to go through what those are. So I actually brought that up right here. And what you can see is the most abundant metals in the exhaust were chromium, iron, molybdenum, sodium, calcium, and aluminum. Right there, CR, F-E-M-O-N-A-C-A-N-A-L. Most abundant metals found in exhaust coming out of planes, chromium, iron, molybdenum, sodium, calcium, aluminum. Also detected right here, vanadium, barium, cobalt, copper, nickel, lead, magnesium, manganese, silicone, titanium, and zirconium. Why does that matter? Mm, now, a lot of us have complained about metal particulates coming out of the sky. We've complained about our blue skies turning gray and how all of that's a big ish. Um, and I'm pretty concerned about it myself because, you know, I think that there's not a lot of honesty coming from these climate scientists. And if there were, they would just admit, look, hey, we really don't fully understand how these clouds are being formed. We're, you know, we're trying to pass the buck here. Um, the airline industry, we all love airlines because you can't have globalism without airlines. And rich people own their own planes. So how, they don't want to have to pay more taxes. Why would they? Problem is, there are three radiative forcing components from planes. Soot aerosols, linear con condensation trails, and induced cirrus cloudiness which is why the title of my page is cirrus clouds matter so while everybody wants to refer to them as chemtrails and you know that's all fun and dandy they are cirrus clouds whether you like it or not once a plane makes a cloud and the cloud fans out and sticks around all day long and blocks your sunlight that is a cirrus cloud so why are planes making cirrus clouds because of their metals and uh this is something that has been, you know, argued about even in the scientific community. Emitted particles could act as ice nucleating particles and affect natural clouds. Um, let's go to that right here and try to blow this up because I know you guys can't read that. Let's see if we can do it without showing off the names of all the people in this email list that we're going through. But... We go down here, dominant fraction of ice residuals collected in cirrus clouds contain metal compounds such as sodium, potassium, copper, lead, and iron. Um, and there's a link between aircraft emissions and ice formation processes. Everybody understands that. Soot showed that larger particles generally are more efficient ice nucleating particles than smaller ones. Interestingly enough, I just got back from the 21st Conference on Planned and Inadvertent Weather Modification, and at that research um, event, William R. Cotton said, Is there a potential for precipitation enhancement by inducing cumulus invigoration by seeding with pollution-sized hygroscopic aerosols? Pollution-sized, meaning bigger particles. So, turns out there is a relation between the size of the particles coming out of the plane and how many clouds they make interesting and i linked that to the people in the email also right here barium was detected in kerosene and in oil it is not supposed to be present in any engine parts lol particles containing metallic metallic compounds were internally mixed with soot I've been telling everybody that for so long, and oh my God, you just hear it, you know, right there in, in your face. Um, really sums it up. So, 
what's going on is all of these metals that we're talking about here, from chromium to aluminum to barium and on, they're inside the soot particles. The soot particles go up. And at some point, the metals free themselves from the soot. How do I know this? Black carbon from aircraft exhaust is destroying ozone melting poles. Um, you can see that link right here. Um, this is on climateviewer.com as well. And the Indian Space Organization basically said this. Though airborne, black carbon is known to dissipate and settle, to the down, settle down in a few months after under the influence of rain and wind and is unlikely to travel upwards of four kilometers. However, a group of scientists, including those from the Indian Space and Science and ISRO's Vikram Sarabhi, Sarabhai Space Center, say they are now have evidence of such particles existing up to 18 kilometers in the stratosphere. And there are about 10,000 of them in every cubic centimeter. That's a lot of black carbon. That's a lot of soot. Given the shape and location of these particles, they argue, it could only derive these emissions from aviation fuel. And they pose a problem because black carbon particles can linger long enough to provide a fertile ground for other chemical reactions that deplete the ozone layer. Oh my, now we've got trouble. This is new trouble for the airline industry because back to our Cirrus Cloud um, page, what we see is carbon black self-levitating cloud seed. Now this is something that David Keith um, proposed as a geoengineering method, photophoretic levitation of carbon black em emissions. Basically, the black gets hot in the sun. The sun makes it levitate. It makes it go up. Um, but carbon dust has been used, you know, like I showed in the initial photo, 1958. The Navy was making clouds with carbon black dust. So it, William uh, Gray and uh, William Frank, or uh, Frank William, Weather modification of carbon dust absorption of solar energy. They talked about using carbon black dust to steer hurricanes. And what do they have here? A jet engine, an afterburner, carbon meg section, and a nozzle. And a carbon black illustration of how carbon dust would be generated and dispensed from jet aircraft. That look like chemtrails to you. Looks like chemtrails to me. Dr. Mosh Alamaro, MIT, when he went to the Department of Homeland Security's Hurricane Mo Modification Workshop... He said, let's use a fleet of transport aircraft, 50,000 feet, to drop soot in the path of a hurricane to steer it. Soot cloud over here, sun you know, heats that soot. Soot is warm by the sun and steers a hurricane. You get the idea. Military, the Air Force and Navy also think that soot's real cool. Um, Non-lethal warfare proposals to use carbon black dust. Right there, Phillips Laboratory Geophysics Directorate, weather modification using carbon black. This is dated 1994. So this is right before the Air Force 2025 papers owning the weather came out, and they've even got a timetable on here, which shows 95 through 2004. Ooh, 2004 is the end of that in 2005. This is operational capability by 2004. Interestingly enough, in weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather in 2025, that's exactly what they said. 2005, CBD. CBD is carbon black dust, and there's a star. Technologies to be developed by the Department of Defense. So carbon black dust is the weather weapon of choice of the U.S. military. How do I know that? Because after doing their owning the weather in 2025 papers... The very next year, Dr. Philip Barnes, um, Arnold Barnes, I always do that, Dr. Arnold Barnes from the Phillips Lab, he uh, gave a presentation to the a joint army um, air force, and they said this, weather modification using carbon black. What will we do with it? Increase precipitation, decrease precipitation. Increase cirrus cloud cover. 
There's your chemtrail conspiracy, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, I have found a uh, link to a secret government program by the military to make cirrus clouds using carbon black. So, what is so special about this carbon black? It's loaded with metals, people, and the metals make cirrus clouds, increase cirrus cloud cover. So, why would the military want to do this? This is from me to you, Ken Caldera, smart ass. You said, Ken Caldera said, I cannot see under any circumstance how geoengineering could ever be used for military purposes. I'm going to give you two because the military said it. Deny visual, satellite, or high altitude reconnaissance. If you can make clouds that block out the sun, you are also blocking out spy satellites. Mm. Or directed energy weapons from space, but that's in a different paper called Operational Weather Control in 2030. You can come to uh, weathermodificationhistory.com, click on any one of these references, scroll down here on the sidebar, click on environmental modification, environmental warfare, and read it right there. Operational defenses through weather control in 2030. And they specifically talk about using directed energy weapons um, in space and how they would like to make clouds to block them out. This is not a conspiracy. These are facts. I base my, all my research in facts and I give them to you that way. So the point I'm trying to make here is that you cannot biofuel your way out of this when the military has the intention to also create cirrus cloud cover and they want to do that using carbon black um by the way this was their summary this is 1997 and it says current capabilities of the u.s military fog dispersal local changes in rain cloud modification surveillance coverage just like i said hole boring making canal clouds, punching holes in clouds so they can shoot their lasers through and create slash suppress cirrus slash contrails. Ionospheric modification, because they had heart by then. So even in 1997, the U.S. military admits that they could create and suppress cirrus and contrails. And they do that through the use of particles containing metal metallic compounds all internally mixed with soot. Back to the cirrus cloud page, very top of the page. Very first one of my fat questions, what makes a cirrus cloud? Wouldn't you know, it comes straight from the military right here. Solid and volatile engine particulate emissions from FT, HAFA, JP8, and blends. This is about biofuels, ladies and gentlemen. Fuel sulfur responsible for rapid volatile particle and um, PM emissions formation and plume sulfate aerosols create nucleation mode and coat soot particles so this is about soot loaded with metal making clouds and the Indians uh, dots not feathers the Indians um, are pretty upset about this because they believe that it's affecting their monsoon is black carbon affecting our monsoon? Other paper. Airplanes may be affecting ozone layer. So to that, I came over here. If you go to archives, you go to artificial clouds. You can see a paper that I recently did um, called cirrus cloud seeding right here. And what you'll see is that that's basically what's going on. They have decided that they need to melt the clouds away at night because that's not allowing heat to escape back into space. So this is a very, very complicated uh, process, but at the same time, it's, it's pretty well understood at this point that planes make soot. Soot goes up. Soot frees, the metal frees itself from the soot and keeps going up. As they said in their paper, um, that it was found up to 18 kilometers in the stratosphere. That is in the ozone layer. And that is how you do stratospheric aerosol injection of sulfur. That soot is also wrapped in, in sulfur dioxide and sulfuric acid. That acid eats at the ozone layer, which will change UVA radiation on the ground and a lot of other things. Many, many unintended or 
intended um, consequences of this. So I'm going to leave the, the links in the details. Please check out Cirrus Clouds Matter on climateviewer.com. That is available on the geoengineering page. Way more to this than uh, I could possibly cover in one video, but you can also just click right here under Archives and Artificial Clouds. Um, that'll let you see all of the articles. I have research on this. And uh, go through this because people do not want to talk about this biofuel issue. And now even the, you know, guys like Sierra Group, Friends of the Earth, these NGOs, they're getting, you know, pretty PO'd about it. I've been PO'd about it since about 2013 and trying to raise awareness of the fact that jet fuel is loaded with metal and when you burn it, it makes soot. The soot is coated in metal. That metal makes clouds. Those clouds are bad. We've had enough and unless you can start using proper terminology, understanding that this is something that you can debate to their face and demand accountability, we're not going to get anywhere. So I don't want to leave this to a bunch of NGOs suing the civil aviation organization um, over this biofuel thing. We have to be in this debate. So um, right now they are testing these uh, biofuels at something called ND Max. And you can look that up right here, the ND Max Airborne Science Program. NASA takes international aviation to the max, where they are working with the German DLR, FAA, and uh, NASA to basically come up with uh, you know a biofuel solution. So they've been testing these biofuels since 2015. Um, the last one was called the Access Flights. Right here is a good one. It's got a great title. We'll do that one. NASA DLR announced joint test flights on biofuel emissions. Um, NASA and DLR to investigate the impact of aviation on climate. Joint test flights on alternative fuel emissions. Um, you can see this on my Cirrus Cloud page. If you go down to Cirrus Cloud. Uh, on my Cirrus Cloud page and you click on what are they doing about Cirrus Clouds what you're gonna see is their plan is to use sulfur and put two fuels in one jet tank to put a lot of sulfur up into the sky stratospheric sulfate injections with commercial aircraft and you can come right down here and actually see tests from the access flights where they're literally flying up into the chemtrail right here. And you can see there's the particles, ultra-fine particles, fine particles, non-volatile particle concentration. But for those who believe they aren't testing the chemtrails, they are testing the chemtrails, as you can see right here. So, access flights, ND Max, biofuels for contrail control, and not a single chemtrail website on the internet wants to talk about it getting really sick of it so you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna beat a dead horse and i'm gonna make sure that everybody knows that this stuff's going on because it's getting kind of ridiculous so a couple last little links just to make you scratch your head u.s department of agriculture's farm to fly program did you even know that was a thing agriculture and aviation partners in prosperity this farm to fly program, President Obama, this is our generation's Sputnik moment. <laughs> it's almost laughable if you didn't want to cry. Farm to fly energy department joins initiative to bring biofuels to the sky, access alternative fuel effects on contrail and cruise emissions, the commercial aviation alternative fuel initiative, CAFI, the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative at, at the FAA, ACRI. I interviewed the head of that. Uh, his name is Dr. Rangasai Hal Thori. And he said, we want to make clouds by day, none by night. Project REACT 4C, reducing emissions of aviation and changing trajectories for the benefit of the climate. Center for Aviation, Transportation, and Environment, Omega, Formation Flying Civil Aviation. Flying planes like birds to save on gas bills. So that might be why you see some lining up on their edges in the near future. This is called the Climate Compatible Air Transportation System, CATS. 
or climate optimized routing of flights. They have this thing called the Contrail Cirrus and Simulation Prediction. Simulation and Prediction Tool, COSIP, which tells them, hey, planes are going to make clouds here. And if those planes are going to, if those clouds are going to heat the planet, we need to avoid them. If they're going to cool the planet, keep them because that's going to make the airline industry some money back so they don't have to pay a bunch of carbon taxes. These are all facts I have presented to you as, as best I can. I hope that you guys will look into these papers and I'm going to link them up in the details. But hey, just remember this. Hashtag Cirrus Clouds Matter. And as long as we continue to have a silly discussion about chemtrails, sands, science, then we will never be able to address scientists and policymakers in a serious matter. So I'd like people to learn about the history of chemtrails and realize that these are Cirrus Clouds. We know how they're making them. Soot loaded with metals. Soot goes up to 18 kilometers in the sky. At some point, the metals free themselves from the soot. The metals make the clouds. These are all facts. They are undeniable, backed up by science. And, you know, unless we really start talking about this pragmatically, we're never going to get anywhere. So I hope that this has been informative. I hope that this resonates with you. Um, please leave me a comment. And uh, attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.